You're listening to Shoe In, covering the ins and outs of all things footwear, from sneakers to heels, loafers to slippers, and every type of shoe in between. Brought to you by the FDRA, the Footwear Industries Association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion. Helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. And now your footwear insiders, Matt Priest and Andy Holt. Welcome back to the Shoe and Show. The Shoe and Show, the Shoe and Show. Is that the new theme song? It's the best show that you know about um, shoes. About- <laughs> That's the very first it. and last time you ever hear that song. <laughs> Probably. That's the that's the creative genius of Andy Polk. He Not only <laughs> that, and he only puts out one of a kind experiences. That's Never true. to be seen again. <laughs> no, we're not going that deep. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going that deep today. Uh, folks, we are taping at the Northwest Materials Show in Portland, Oregon, which is, I think, and I could be corrected, but it's the largest. Uh, material show for footwear in the U.S. I believe so. Yep. Uh, Just claim it. Just there claim you go. <laughs> and our guest today is uh, is a repeat uh, offender, a repeat offender, and uh, a, fo- <laughs> a repeat footwear offender. <laughs> <laughs> but this time he's on. <laughs> That's <laughs> he's right. In person, yeah. He's in person, like, so I can't say yeah, too much, yeah, right? Yeah. It's not like the phone call last You're time. You're sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> My hands are long. <laughs> <laughs> so he's from. Hisham uh, is the owner and operator of uh, the material shows uh, here in the U.S. And, and congratulations, has also recently done uh, a show in the EU or uh, in the U.K. London, yes. In London, which was very successful. So a growing, thriving empire yes, sir. Uh, that you have. Uh, obviously, like, there's thousands of people at this show. Um, so hundreds and hundreds of material suppliers, thousands of designers, developers, material teams, sourcing teams all come here, get inspiration, network with each other. There's a there's a a large energy, positive energy here on innovation wise and, and inspiration wise. Um, but there's some people who have never been to a show like this before. So for for folks out there who may not understand how material selection and development happens, this is where it happens, right? I mean, tell them. This, this is the inception. Right. This is, you know, you sketch something on a napkin, you come here, you can find just about anything you need to, to make your product right. anywhere. Any kind of material, any, any application. You find all any. the materials, the services, the uh, the, uh, the components, uh, the connections. Right. Um, even you can learn from some of these people that... Uh, what to do next. Right. I mean, people come in. I remember um, years, a few years back, uh, somebody came in, a couple of guys came in with a sketch on, their, uh, on, a, on a piece of paper. Uh-huh. They came in, they talked to some of our vendors. With, in no time, they were like within a year and a half, they were actually uh, have a finished product. Yeah. They, 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 uh, they, I think they went to FN uh, platform. Uh-huh. And, their first order was about $10 million. Wow. From a first show. Starting wow. here. So they started here. Uh, that's a re- I mean, that's really interesting because we, you know, a lot of our listeners know F and Platform and Fanny and all that. That's finished product. That's most, mostly, right? yes. That's yes. Once, you, once you launch it and it's out there and you're trying to get buyers from the But retailers. you create it here, but basically. But it, it starts here, so. The brands spec their materials from all of these vendors. Right. These vendors are the ones, the suppliers are the ones that uh, bring in new stuff every six months right every six months we have a semi-annual show every six months the suppliers come in with uh, with new stuff and new technologies new ideas and that's where the the big brands like nike adidas columbia under armor and the small ones and the medium ones they're here to to see what's going on right to see what these guys are bringing because they're traveling the world they're they're getting their information from um, Big organizations like Peclair, Peclair's Paris and right. Premier Vision as well and, and some other trend forecasting companies. So they learn about what the future looks like. Right. And three to five years out. So they're working on products that are a year, a year and a half, two years out now. Mm. So that's where they find it all. They find it in one-stop shopping the Northwest or Northeast Materials Show. Well, I'm, I'm glad you brought out the Northeast Show because we were there earlier this year, Sham. And is there a difference? Or do you have a different clientele? Are the same exhibitors? And how does that relate to what's going on in London? Well, the, the, the Portland Show is the first one, as you all know. It started over 25 years ago. But the Northeast Show is, uh, is a smaller show because of the 
the athletic and outdoor presence in the Northeast is mm-hmm. not as big as it is on the West Coast. Right. right. And especially Oregon. You're talking about over 800 athletic and outdoor companies are in, in wow. Oregon. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. And so this is just by whatever, um, it's it just the nature of the beast, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Is that the, the, all these companies support a big show like this. So a lot of the suppliers from all over the world know where the hub is and they come to it. So the Northeast, definitely the Massachusetts, you know, Maine and, and Manchester, you know, uh, New Hampshire area, there are a lot of brands. But now they're more central in downtown Boston. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of the big brands have big uh, headquarters yeah. downtown. So our goal is to move the show from Wilmington to downtown Boston wow. in February of next year. Really? Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, you're here to hear first. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you signed contracts? Yeah, we or? signed the contract. Well, we'll all. be there yeah. then. Yeah. We will be there. Yeah. We'll bring yeah. the champagne. Uh, we'll be at the Heinz Convention Center, and so we're, uh, we're definitely going to be... Uh, it's a good move. I talked to a lot of the brands that were at the show last week, Yeah. and they said, about time. Yeah. Yes. yeah. About time. It's more convenient. A lot more people would show up. I right. mean, people even from other states. Right, and they could do meetings. Meetings. And then outside, restaurants out know, there. Restaurants yeah, nearby. Sure. We're not like in the no man's land. Right, like right, we are right. Now, but, so this move is good. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> as the difference between this show and that show is, it's pretty much the same. A lot of these suppliers do exhibit there. Um, but about 150 of them from here do a lot more business with the brands out on the, on the East Coast. Right. right. So it, it's, it's that. And so we have less brands over there than here. So naturally, we only we have about half the size of the number right. of, uh, of exhibitors. There. And, and what about the UK this year? The has- UK, we had a great uh, first show ever. We had almost, it's, it's um, virgin land for us. We didn't right, know right. what to do, and we didn't think that we were going to be able to attract the brands. But we were able to attract a ton of big brands like yeah. Pentland, Decathlon, mm-hmm. uh, Clarks, and Wolverine, New Balance Europe, Nike Europe, um, uh, Burberry. I right. mean, we had we had a good quality attendance. That's to great. To the and I know you guys had good partners with Satra, who was helping. Satra you know. was an incredible sponsor. Uh, they they brought in a lot of people. They uh, spread the word around Europe. So we were definitely happy with the outcome. And when the when your clients come, uh, you know, like the following week, you come back from uh, London. It's like, when do I sign up? That oh, that's great! Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's so good. Many of them said, "Well, you know, we knock on these guys' door for a long time, and we mm-hmm. just can't get an appointment." You brought them to us. Yeah, so that that was that's definitely great. a big win. That's it, great. Yeah. All right, as we look around the show, and and you know, obviously, there's every kind of material possible that you can think of. Uh, when you walk through, what are you seeing that's different than, than in years past? And what are the conversations you're hearing around materials? Are there any big issues that people are concerned about? The number one that you hear from a lot of these suppliers, you talk to any one of them, there is an eco-friendly, sustainable story behind every product. Right. right. It's not just a fad, a sustainability and eco-friendliness to you know, and when it comes to materials, because these are products that are going to either end up in the landfill or they're going to be end up reused or recycled mm. or last longer. Right. So that's definitely the story with a lot of the suppliers. So they're, what they're bringing to the table is the new technologies, new ways of, of recycling and, and reusing and, and lasting and, uh, and green products, basically. So that's what they're bringing to the table because the brands are demanding it and you know, nature is demanded sure. as well. The new thing that we have this time in, 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 uh, in Portland is um, thanks to FDRA's idea to add a material tech central, which we have about uh, maybe half a dozen uh, high-tech uh, companies that are uh, present, and they're doing a great job with the, their presentations. One of them is uh, x Right Pantone, mm-hmm. Material Exchange, right. um, and then we have Liquid Wire, uh, a yeah. couple more. I, I can't see a couple more over there, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So that, that whole idea behind that is this new revolution of digitizing, Digitizing, searching, 3D printing, sure. 4D printing, and then, then that definitely this is a good stepping stone right. for what the future can bring this because a lot of these companies are they just don't know how to get to the brands right and this is definitely the venue to be at so to ex- give themselves an exposure to to the brands that are looking for newness right new stuff 
and this is definitely new. And new processes and new too. Processes. Yeah. Roman SCAD is one of our great sponsors yeah. as well. I mean, joined the forces with us this time around, thanks to you. And, you know, he came to London and he was impressed with the yeah. show. And now he's actually was very happy. I saw him earlier. And was like, yeah, he was happy. Yeah, <laughs> he's generally always yeah, happy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the guys yeah. at Roman Cat are generally always happy. Yeah, They're is, good, is, good, good guys. A, he's a good man. He's yeah. a good man. But I think I saw a bigger smile on his face. Well, that's year. good. That is yeah. good. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So, I mean, as you think about kind of, it's really interesting to me that you talked about these, what we're seeing here in front of us is something in development two or three years down the road. And so, couple that with the fact that sustainability is not, it is a trend, it's not a flash in the pan, it's not lip service, that yes. the, the work that has to be done on the back end, on the material side, the development mm-hmm. side, the, the manufacturing side, that's happening right now. And so in three, four, five years' time, I'm actually really excited to see how all this kind of rolls out in a commercial sense. Well, I met with the, um, um, yesterday introduced me to the, to the uh, Ramesh from yep, Allbirds. from Allbirds. I, saw, I ran into him today and he... We talked a bit, and and he, they're they're on cutting edge. These yeah. guys are definitely, for example, they're they're working on the upper is the upper. Sometimes, you know, I mean, if it's a um, uh, fabric, it's a fabric. But a lot of times, the the other part of the shoe that needs to also be uh, inclusive of the story of sustainability, right. of recycled materials, the foams, the midsole, the outsole. Those are things that maybe a lot of times, you know, people don't look at them as, well, what do we do with those? Right, right. But they're definitely, he's focusing on that. And that comes from science. I mean, it's not like something that me or anybody else that is not a scientist that look into how we can make products from, you know, the landfill. Right. Instead of throwing it in the landfill, we can make it and reuse it and it still be a sustainable product, reusable, that would last even longer and, and maybe perhaps back into version product. Yeah. yeah. Man, I, when you think about kind of the supply chain as a whole, and we, we've talked about your story before, and I encourage people to go back and listen to that podcast, but Definitely. when you envision the supply chain of what the Fort Worth supply chain looked like when you started the show and what it is now, what what is like totally blowing you away and then have we gotten away from some things that you think we should kind of get back to are there basics that when you started this show and you started to roll out and started bring people together things that we're not really thinking about that we're kind of in the name of innovation we're kind of casting aside i think in, in maybe different industries it's kind of some things have gone away the finished product world and the the online buying and the wholesaling and all that stuff. So that's kind of a little bit. But the one lucky thing about us, and you see, you, you see, you meet, I meet people in the lobby, they're coming up to register or, in, you know, walk in the aisles and, or at the reception or the lunch. It's like, Hisham, oh, you remember this, that, and the other. And there definitely there was a different story back then. But, but the volume was not as it is now. I think the way that the, 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 the incremental increases mm-hmm. are bigger. Right, especially in uh, athletic and you know sportswear and athletic. Right, it's right. A, the athletic and outdoor industry is much bigger. So we used to maybe say, okay, well, we're buying a million dollars worth of materials. You know, that's good enough. But but now you're talking in the billions. Yeah. Right. And and in probably five to ten years, I am forecasting just from talking to my friends and here and there, I'm thinking it could double. It could double just in materials. Right. And so sustainability and eco-friendly materials, since we're all demanding this as a consumer and the companies will have to listen to us. And so I think that is going to be the story even bigger and bigger. So we're not going to see any materials that are not sustainable or not environmentally mm-hmm. friendly or recyclable. It'll be the standard. It'll be the standard. Right. It will be the standard. And, that, and those are the materials that are probably going to help our kids live on this earth. You right. Know, even better right so i think we're taking definitely a big step a leap of faith right well uh investing in the science and making new products i mean we have people like bloom foam or you know other guys like that or you know jones and vining they're all looking at how can we make foam from recycled materials right yeah what i think is great here as well is just (laughs) i you know we started a a new series kicks over coffee uh and it I started that series because there was a there's a series with Jerry Seinfeld comedians and cars getting coffee right. Yep, I, th- yeah. I thought it was a great idea, but 
I remember one of my mentors told me a long time ago when I was sitting down chatting with him, and I thanked him for taking the time. He's a super busy guy. Um, and he said, you know, it, it, you can never underestimate just having a cup of coffee with a friend and chatting about stuff, how impactful that can be to your day, you know? That's true. And, and so I think here you have an interaction where you have real relationships being formed. It's not... It's not like other trade shows where you're going around and you're buying something that you see a finished product, right? And you're like, all right, let's negotiate how we discount it. You're going to somebody and you're saying, I have a vision and a dream and I need you to help me make it a reality. And it's a real relationship, right? You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. You hit the nail on it's the a head. Lot, it's a lot harder than selling a finished product. That, right. You know, it's, and, and the, the great thing about this is, is if you get a right, if you form the right relationship with the right supplier... They help you make sure you don't make mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. They're there to help ensure your vision is this. I, I understand that. You can't execute this material that way. Here's an alternative or here's a better way to do it. or what. So you're actually forming these like lifelong bonds here with people that you trust and know to help bring something that doesn't exist into reality. And it's it's something pretty cool to see, you know? And that's the one thing that I, I you know, I think uh, back to uh, Matt's um a question, I think the changes are not really that big in terms of the people-to-people -people mm -hmm. relationships. Because mm -hmm. I see some of the uh, my ex-colleagues at Nike that sometimes, like, you know, I just wanted to come and say hello to, you know, H.S. Park or right. you know, to, to John Smith or something. You know, I haven't seen my friends for a long time. Mm -hmm. They retire and they still come here. Right. Because this, this seems to be, like, the one place that... You know the semi-annual family picnic. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one good thing about the semi-annual is if it's in the summer, it's great. But in right, the right, time, right. it's not. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's kind of the part of that. It never changed. Yeah. Yeah. But of course, the numbers, the dollars, right. are, are bigger, much bigger, and faster growth. The square footage is much bigger. Oh, this. Oh, the growth in for us has been tremendous. Um, I think seven, eight years ago, uh, it just went from went about twenty three percent overnight. Mm -hmm. that, that that next show, I didn't know what to do. I remember you talking about your fax machine would whiz up, and <laughs> you know, oh yeah, we'll listen <laughs> to the fax machine. Yeah, so the, the, uh, I love that because right. even if I'm sleeping, I'll wake up to that. <laughs> 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 like that's a good sound to wake up to. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that would be a good uh, wake-up uh, sound. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we invented something new. <laughs> we need up, yeah. Oh, uh, my need gosh. need to talk to tech guys a little yeah, exactly. bit. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. Um, when you look out at, at footwear today from your vantage point, coming from your many years at Nike doing materials, and we're looking at, like, finished product now and, and seeing all these great things happening from Flyknit to, you know, Fly yeah, leather. Fly leather yeah. to, you know, now we even, you know, yesterday when we had a summit, printing, 3D yeah. printing stuff, all this stuff. I mean, where do you, what makes you really excited? What do you think is just some, are you constantly wowed at what these guys are coming up with and designing and developing? I mean. Absolutely. I mean, I definitely try to keep up with what's new. Yeah. You know, with what my vendors bring to the table. I'd like to be in the know a little bit. It's very difficult to kind of organize and trade, you know, the show right. and be worried about badges sure. and, uh, and boot set up and that but definitely uh, I'm wowed yeah. I'm sometimes like this this product <laughs> exists right, you know? right. And, and like I said the technologies that they bring into the table is great and many of the vendors you know the, the ocean plastics that they use and, and recycle and, 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 and put it into shoes yeah. Ni you know Adidas is big on that as well and so is Nike Nike started this whole right. sustainability right. Um, research years right. ago and now handed it over to the, to another organization. Yeah. So a lot of these big brands are definitely doing good for the environment. It's just so to some people it seems like it's a little slower, but good things don't It's progress. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. We've that's talked true. about that before where it's like, you know, it's... You know, we, there's there's an ideological spectrum on sustainability, and mm -hmm. you know, people who are purists will never be happy with anything until. Right. I, I mean, just don't make a shoe then if you're that if that pure, right? right? right. So don't even have a we'll product. Go back but, to barefoot. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but ultimately, it, it really is about progress and trying to get better, and and you know, and I think as, as long as you're measuring yourself and you're getting better year by year, that's progress. And I, you know, it's 
Well, we all, I mean, even, even we learn from, that, from the show and from what these scientists, if you will, um, come up with. Yeah. You go home, it's like, wow, you know, my shoe is, is this way. Right. You know, um, and, and, and it wakes you up to other things to, to become more environmentally conscious. Right. You know, and, and, and the other things in your life that you do every day. Because this is kind of a learning experience as well. I mean, right. it's, it's hands-on. Yeah. You talk to people that have, are doing, are making materials that are we're, you know, we're wearing. Right. You know. Garments and clothing and belts and even, you know, wallets and all that other stuff that we use every day. Right? Yeah. And, and so this kind of transfers into your subconscious and you go home. It's like, wow, all these clients of mine or these, you know, colleagues of mine, they're working on this product. Mm -hmm. So what can I do in my own personal life right. as well right. to, to improve on that or to add to it? Right. That's a great a point. Way. It's yeah. a fashionable thing, Hisham, indeed. Oh, yeah. is that leading into it's, our next segment? <laughs> it is. <laughs> you just left it hanging there. You're supposed to no. go all the way in. <laughs> well, then she <laughs> laughed. I'm like, she might as well take it from here. I think, yeah. I, I think, I I think Jasmine call. is going like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I heard my call. Um, but, yeah, so I was online, and I seen an article on, like, leather sneakers. And I know, Hisham, I've been... I've saw you maybe three times so far since I've been um, here in Portland. Um, I've seen you wear sneakers every day too. So I was just wondering, like, do you have like a fashionable sneaker that you put on to go to shows or meetings or anything like that? Mm, a fashionable question. sneaker. That's a tough yes. question because I have to be neutral. Okay. <laughs> right. 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 I have to be neutral. Uh, I, do you I have leather sneakers? Do you have like the? I have a ton of sneakers. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'll tell a little quick story about. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I uh, in my neighborhood and my uh, and my family, I was the one with. Uh, I probably told this on the first interview, but I was the one with the biggest foot. Mm. Oh. <laughs> my my dad's uh, size was eight and a half. Mm -hmm. My brothers were nine and a half, and I am size forty seven and a half, which is thirteen. Look wow. at you, yeah. I was like, where do you find anything like that in Jordan? I had to go to the used, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and these American guys were donating all these shoes to Jordan, and then you go to the, uh, what's it called, uh, like uh, Goodwill or something? Right, right. They don't, they, were they donating the Jordans to Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> so they donate from the West to there, and it's like, awesome. America yeah. has big feet. <laughs> I'm going there. Tiny brains, big feet. I came, I came here and I bought, I went to Kenny Shoes and I bought oh, two Kenny. pairs right away. <laughs> Love Kenny Shoes. So, but, Kenny and shoes. then I ended up working for a, a, a sneaker company. Yep. So, and Nike was very generous, of course. We always, it's like, okay, we have these, uh, you know, blemish shoes. You guys can go help yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best. A dozen shoes a month. So yeah. I have enough shoes to last <laughs> three, uh, two, three more uh, lifetimes. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to get a picture of Matt's closet and a picture of your closet. Uh -huh. And we'll oh, see great. who see has more sneakers. With, I see him wearing sneakers. Uh -huh. yeah, he's uh, sneaky, yeah. though, because sneaky we get a picture sneakers. of his closet, but we also had to get a picture of his office because <laughs> he had right. shoes lined up. Oh. And those count, too. Oh. So he's he's got hidden stashes we don't even know yeah. about. It, that makes us the most unsustainable guys on the planet, H.M., you and me. So <laughs> you wear them. I do. Well, we do you have any leather yeah. sneakers? No. I do have some leather sneakers. Oh, okay. Blackstone leather sneakers. I have, yes. Okay. I have four I have four yeah, pairs of leather Blackstone. sneakers. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I, I think your question, you just asked me, asked Matt the question, now it woke me up. Honestly, I had bought a pair of Kohans. Yep. They're on maybe the list. 15, yeah. 15, maybe years ago when Nike owned them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the employee store they were not that look good looking of a pair of shoes. I put them on, I'm like heaven. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And I wore them for a while. I wore them at the show during the show. And one time I went to cut the grass with them. Forgot that they're on me. <laughs> they turned a little bit green on that side. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, uh, so I said, that's it. They're, they're my work right. shoes for outside. Aww. I still have them. And they're the most comfortable shoes I've ever had in yeah. my life. Wow. So that's my favorite. And you cut awesome. the grass with them. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Kohans. There you go. Kohans. Well, that's a commercial for Kohans. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me later. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hisham, thanks so much uh, thank for, for setting up this show for the industry and for having us here and uh, being such a good partner to us uh, and, and helping us on our, on our side trying to educate and get the industry engaged and and be advocates for the industry on a range of issues 
Um, and I hope we've been helpful for you. And and I've just enjoyed the partnership we've I had have, together. I uh, I'm speechless when it comes yeah. how, of how um, how I feel towards this partnership. Good. I'm glad we got to meet in Hong Kong. Yeah, and, me too. And and talk and have champagne over there. And, <laughs> and you guys have been beyond. Good. Beyond my expectation. Good. And well, I appreciate it. You. It was lovely working with I'm you. I'm looking forward to Boston. I'm yep. looking forward to what you're doing next in the UK and Europe. And uh, we'll we'll be there with you and help support you guys any way we can. And you let me know if I can do anything for you guys. Perfect. Anytime, anywhere. And uh, where can people sign up for the shows? American AmericanEvents.com is yes. that the URL? Yes, okay. AmericanEvents.com. Or just Google Material Shows. The Material Show or AmericanEvents.com. They okay. can they can visit that website. We'll have an update and, uh, and a wrap up uh, update right. on the website soon. And it's it, brands get free access to the show, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, okay. we didn't mention that, but brands do. The and the only the only. Um, well, just the brands. I mean, they all the do. Footwear brands, that, right. you know, footwear brands, right? Footwear brands, and they are, you know, even um, right. high-tech brands like Microsoft, Google, and and others. They come walk the show as well sure. as Apple and wow, and and even the auto industry comes here to to, to see what we're doing as wow. well. So, awesome! But thank you again for yeah, for thank the you for time. Having us. And, uh, it's been great. Thanks, thanks for being here. Absolutely. And, uh, Enjoy your stay in Thank Portland. you. Thank I'll you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Yep. <laughs> Folks, this is Shoe and Show. We're covering the ins and outs of all things footwear. We were taping live from the Northwest Material Show where thousands of brands and material suppliers are working together to form new relationships and make inspiration come to life. Uh, if you have ideas on, on show topics you'd like to hear us discuss or if you know a guest that we should have on, please let us know. You can go to shoeandshow.com, drop us a note. You can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, we're also on Spotify, anywhere that podcasts are played. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to our podcast. Please spread the word. Let your friends know about this. This is for the industry, by the industry, of the industry. And until next time, Shoe In is out. Shoe In has been brought to you by the FDRA the footwear industry's association focused on retail, trade, politics, and fashion, helping create and enhance conversations on all things footwear. For information about FDRA, visit FDRA.org.